Today, as we continue to look at some of God's attributes, uh, we looked at God's sovereignty before, and now today we want to take and take some time to focus on God's immutability. And if you're not familiar with that term, it simply means that He is unchanging; He doesn't change. And so that can be a, a real anchor of hope during times like this, where it seems like things are changing constantly, and we're never sure what is going to happen next. We can, no matter what is going on around us, we can always cling. And we can always hold on to God because we know that he is exactly who he has always been and he will never change. And so I'm going to use Grudem's definition from his uh, systematic theology book as far as mutability. And it says this, God is unchanging in his being, attributes, purposes, and promises. And I really like that definition because it gives us four aspects of this, uh, of the areas in which God is unchanging. And they all have an important it played an important factor in giving us hope during times like this. And the first is his being, that God is always going to be the same uh, in his being. He is who he says he is. He is who he has always been. Uh, his, his being, his nature does not change. Psalm 102 says this, Of old you laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you will remain. They will all wear out like a garment. You change them like a robe, and they will pass away. But you are the same, and your years have no end. That's going to play in a little bit to what we're going to talk about the next time, which is the fact that God is eternal, uh, and that the future holds no threat to him, uh, because he's already there. And I don't want to get ahead of myself, but uh, you know what, what the psalmist is laying out here is that we can trust God, because he is the same. He, he doesn't change. He's not doesn't have a fleeting personality that it, that changes with his mood. He doesn't have moods the way we think of moods, where you talk to somebody who's in a good mood and things go well, where you've talked to the same person when they're in a bad mood, and, and you know the conversation is totally different. It's not the case with God. Jesus is also given that attribute of immutability in Hebrews 13.8, which makes sense because Jesus is the Son, and he is part of the, the, you know, the second person in the Trinity, so therefore he is God says this, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. And so we can cling to that, that God is not swayed uh, and changed in who he is. And he's not moved by these different different circumstances that sometimes can affect us in how we feel and what how we react to things. Uh, the second area that is in that definition of the fact that God is immutable or unchanging is his attributes. And this is just an awesome thing because his attributes, which is what we're going through and talking about, can be a, such a source of hope to know who God is and how he deals with us and, and how he deals with the circumstances of the world. And in his attributes, you know, one example is a couple of different attributes are the attributes of patience and mercy. And we see that laid out in Malachi 3, 6, where there's a prophetic judgment going on. And, and the, it says this, for I, the Lord, do not change. Therefore, you, O children of Jacob, are not consumed. So God is saying, you're going to be preserved because I'm not, I don't change. Just because you've done something and there's going to be uh, consequences for your actions doesn't change the love I have for you. It doesn't change the protection I have placed over you. And then how about his goodness and his faithfulness? Those are some great attributes to, to, to cling to during times like this. James 1.17 says this, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. So not only in this is, is James saying that God doesn't change, he's saying there's not even a variation or a shadow due to change because he is a rock. He is the same. And if he is given us, if every good and every perfect gift that we have in this life has come from God, and he doesn't change, then we can draw the conclusion that he is going to continue to give us good and perfect gifts. And so we can cling to that, and we can hold fast to that truth that, that he's not going to change and just start, just stop giving us those things. The third area of, of this definition is his purposes. Uh, Psalm 3311 says, The counsel of the Lord stands forever, the plans of his head to all generations. 
and so or his heart to all generations. Isaiah 46, 9 through 11 captures a very similar idea. It says, For I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times things not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand and I will accomplish all my purpose. Calling a bird of prey from the east, the man of my counsel from a far country, I have spoken and I will bring it to pass. I have purposed and I will do it. There's God saying, I am going to follow through on what I say. My purpose will be accomplished and that will not change. And we can take comfort in that. And then the last one is that he doesn't change in his promises. Numbers 23, 19 is, is such a unique passage because it's, uh, you know, the Balak hires Balaam to try to curse Israel. And, and Balaam... Uh, is told by God that he's only allowed to bless Israel. And, and, and there's an interesting back and forth, but this is one of the things he says. He says, God is not a man that he should lie or a son of man that he should change his mind. Has he said, and will he not do it? Or has he spoken and will he not fulfill it? When God makes a promise, he will follow through. What are some of the promises we see in Scripture? We talked about one of them the last time, that he has promised that all things will ultimately work for the, to the good of those who would love him and are called according to his glorious purpose. We don't understand how that's going to happen. We don't understand how that's going to look. And it might not look the way we think it's going to look. We might not ever understand it this side of eternity. But the bottom line is we can hold fast to those promises and all the promises of Scripture because God doesn't change. He is immutable. My prayer is that you would find comfort in these words, that you would find some hope that you serve and can trust in a God who is not affected by what's going on around him because he is steadfast and movable. He is a shelter in our time of storm and he is the rock to which we can cling. Have a great day.